If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta. Uh, transformational shaman, transformational or spiritual business coach. Yeah, it's early. <laughs> it's early and it's Monday. Monday. It's Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here as always with my best friend in book at the Catherine Larange. And she is a spiritual business coach as well. And I have actually finally, finally managed to master her name after two years yes, of knowing her. <laughs> okay. It's all good. As long as the first name has a K. Name this. <laughs> you know what? I, the only thing I care about is that the first name has a K. That's the only go. thing that matters. Everything else you can do, whatever you want with it. Yeah. You want, you want to hear something interesting? You don't know this. My, okay. My grandmother, it, it's not Catherine, it's Kathleen. Mm-hmm. But my, my grandmother on my father's side was Kathleen and oh. with a K and my mother, her original name before she got married was Kathleen Dorsey. And so she went by Dorsey cause it's a family name, but oh. that was her original name. So there you go. Uh, with with, a K. The K, with the K. K. I actually worked where at one of the places that I worked, there were three Catherines. Oh. So there was there was like a Catherine spelled the same way as mine, but with a C one who you met the varmint and then myself. And so we would just all go by the last names. Yeah. It's just easier. No, just had to. Yeah. Yeah. We we are doing mama Mia right now. Uh, We're doing a production of mama Mia in the local community theater. There are five different Michaels associated. Oh my goodness. There are only 12 parts and there are five. (laughs) <laughs> now one of the michaels is is the sound guy but four michaels are in the production four oh out of the 12 parts are michael michaels wow <laughs> you ca- have to call it michael mia then yeah i i we've yeah. <laughs> it's hysterical i'm totally rec- i'm totally recommending that we're totally going to be doing that but yeah, yeah so that's that's been highly entertaining we've been referring to uh, everybody by their parts names by their, yes. their roles rather than by their names because otherwise we're just oh. like Michael yeah. who, Mike who, Michael, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> too hard. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Today. Good Good Hello. Hello. How are ya? How are Hi. ya? Yeah, we didn't jump right into things today, guys. Sorry. That's okay. Just a little That's bit okay. Chat, but you'll get there. It'll yeah. be fine. Today we're going to talk about collaboration versus competition, or competition mm-hmm. versus collaboration, right? And the mindset that goes into that, and how that works, right? Because it is, it's big, right? This is one of the biggest lack based thinkings that happen in spiritual work or business, right? Is this idea that you're in competition with anyone. Well, and not just spiritual, but like every, Every, right? Like that's the dominant vibration of the planet is that it is a competition based. There's not enough to go around. Right. And the fact is that there are going to be people who are going to resonate with you and buy from you. And then there are going to be people, be people who resonate with you and never buy from you. And then there will be people who don't resonate with you at all, who will buy from someone else. Thank goodness for that. Thank goodness for that. That's right. Because you don't (laughs) want to work with everybody and everybody doesn't want to work with you. And it doesn't mean you're not good. It doesn't mean you don't have the best thing out there or you're not the biggest badass. It just means that you don't resonate for people. And and for those people. And this is, this is one of the biggest arguments for dropping your mask, right? Because Mm -hmm. if you are wearing a mask that says, I am the perfect spiritual teacher. I am the perfect spiritual coach. I am the perfect. I am the perfect. (laughs) Perfect. And, and look at me, I'm so spiritual, right? And if if you're wearing that. Yeah. If you think you're perfect, you have not done your work. (laughs) Well, well, nobody, nobody actually thinks they're perfect, but many people put on a mask of perfection and live behind it going, I'm not good enough. Ah," Right. So, but if you're putting that mask on, you will not be resonating with the people who truly will appreciate you. And so you're going to end up with people opting in who will have expectations that are ridiculous because you put out that you're perfect and they will give you no room to be human. God forbid you have to cancel something because you're sick or because you, you're not 
you need a mental health day or whatever. Right. I did that last week, actually. My, my, I was just like toast and I texted my students and I was like, would anybody be horrified if we didn't do a class today? And they all went, Oh, thank God. Right. (laughs) I was like, okay, no class today. Right. You know, I'm doing weekly classes with these students. And so, you know, weekly classes for, for many, many months, having a day off is a benefit to both sides every now and again. Right. But, you know, if I had recruited people with the expectation that I was perfect, they would have taken that as a, oh, her perfection isn't real. And people love to rip you down off of a pedestal when you put yourself there. Right. So, you know, that's not a good idea. So, you know, just if, if you are transparent and you're letting people know who you really are, then they have the opportunity to really resonate with you. They have Mm -hmm. the opportunity to really be excited about working with you because they can see you. But if you're putting out perfection, you're going to get people who are expecting perfection and you're going to miss the people who would have loved the person that you are underneath all of that stuff. Mm. And so this is the, this is my, my hardcore, you know, invitation to you to strip off the mask, let yourself be human, let people see the real you and, you know, then step in from there. So, you know, all of this, right. Mm. So let's, let's talk about collaboration and, 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 and competition. I keep forgetting the word because I don't, (laughs) I don't believe in it, (laughs) but you know, here's, here's the thing, right? Sometimes you will do a joint promotion, right? And that joint promotion will go out between you and another spiritual teacher or spiritual coach or, you know, practitioner or whatever it is who may in your mind do exactly the same thing that you do. And you're like, why would I promote somebody else to my list? And why would they promote me to theirs? It's like, because sometimes the wrong people are on both lists. Sometimes Mm -hmm. those people need to be on each other's lists Mm -hmm. and happy to help everybody get to the right list and everybody make sales, right? That's, that's why, that's why you do it. If you don't see it as competition and you see it as instead helping people get to the right place, then there's no problem. Right. I'm, I've been sort of monologuing here. You want to stick two cents in? I know you do. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'm, you know, I'm, as you're talking, I'm really thinking about vibration, right. And the, the, the vibration. So when you're, when you're collaborating, there's this, first of all, your, your in alignment in terms of your thinking and your vibration around how it works. Right. So, right. so you couldn't possibly help all the people who are looking for help. Like you just, you can't, right? And thank goodness for that. Like, you're not going to be, like you said, you're not going to be the person. It's just like looking for a therapist or a doctor or your massage person or your hair person, you know, like it's the same thing with finding a coach. You've got to find the right fit. So, so when you're in alignment vibrationally and when you're cross promoting each other with that understanding and belief, there's actually this like amplified vibration because you're amplifying each other that's going out. And so everything is energy, of course, right? So if you're actually amplifying the vibration, not only are you getting a greater reach, but you're amplifying the vibration of each individual. So there's a better like a resonance of who is that right person. If Does that make sense to you, Kelly? Makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. So- and and this is what we're talking about. So, you know, when we talk about collaboration, so so if we assume that that competition doesn't exist, right? That it's not about <clears throat> competing against other people for more market share and blah 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 blah, right? It's it's about finding the right fit for each person to be able to get what they need, right? And so all right, so we'll, we'll, let's leave that there. Let's let's come and talk about collaboration. Now, The thing about collaboration, in order for it to work, it needs to be equal, okay? And so what that means is that you need to collaborate with people who are at the same level as you in order for there to be equal skin in the game and equal benefit to be had, right? So you don't go to somebody who's got a seven, you know, $8 million business and say, hey, would you cross promote with me when you're doing 50 grand, right? They're, They're gonna say no right? Because there's no real upside for them. You don't have enough skin in the game. Or, you know, if they say yes, they'll do it for, you know, if you've got a thousand person mailing list, they'll send to a thousand people if they're willing to do that. But when they're at that level, probably not, right? It's more work than it's worth to them. So 
what you have to do is seek out other people who are at your same level and partner with them, right? The fastest and similar, way. And similar values. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the fastest way to grow your list is to borrow other people's audience, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And your list is where your money is. So we'll be really clear about that. Your list is where your money is because your list is the people who are willing to follow you deeply enough to hand over their email address, right? Yeah. And, and they want to hear from you. Yeah. And they want to hear, yeah, from, hear from you. Exactly. And you're not wrong. The, the values piece is super important, right? Mm -hmm. Um, collaboration can take on a variety of different forms, right? So one is uh, known as a joint venture, which is you do something together. So you might start a membership group together. You might do a joint event together, something like that. That's a, that's a joint venture. It, if you are doing a collaboration, that's just a list build collaboration. So that's things like summits and events that are short-term sort of thing. So when I say an event in the JV world, joint venture JV, uh, that would be like a physical event somewhere, right? Whereas a, you know, you might do a, a little, um, a, a day of events around different topics. So, you know, like a, a psychic fair online or something, right? That would be a collaboration, right? That, that and a summit or anything, anything where you're just exchanging information. So like the other day I went on to Haley Rose podcast and she did an interview with me to her podcast about personal growth for spiritual entrepreneurs. And this week I'm putting her on my LinkedIn. We're going to do LinkedIn live because that's where most of my people who would be resonant with her message will mm. are, are. And so it doesn't have to be equal, right? In terms of, it doesn't have to be the same thing, right? I'm not having her on here. I'm having her on my LinkedIn live because that's where her, her people are most. And so you know, we'll go live and she'll be able to see all my people and all that stuff. And we're going to put some promotions out to let people know what's happening. And then it'll be live and we'll add it into our social media and repeat that periodically. Right. So these are ways that you can, can do things like that. And so, but you can't do it if you feel like you're in competition. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm walking my talk right here because Haley does work on business building for my market. I have a program for business building for my market. I'm okay with that. It's all right. She's yeah. going to, uh, she's going to talk about the stuff that's most resonant for her. And I'm going to talk about the stuff that's most resonant for me and the people who are meant to be with us will be there. And neither one of us see as a competition. Okay. So rising tide raises all ships, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody mm -hmm. learns more. So mm -hmm. again, I'm monologuing. Yeah. Well, and, you know, and what's coming for me is really when you're coming from a place of, you know, how can I help? How can I serve? Not just in terms of the work that you're doing with your clients, but in your collaboration. So when you really ask that question, like, how can I serve and support you in your business? What would, what would really help you right now? It, it's this, you know, it's that law of circulation. It's that law of compensation that we're, that we're activating. And, you know, one of the, I think one of the ways that I really kind of like got this whole competition thing was there, where I used to live, there was a, a coach who has the same certification as I do and had been in kind of in the business for quite a bit longer and was doing, you know, kind of multiple six figures. And so when I first started and, and, you know, I've been kind of coaching and counseling in lots of ways, but not in, with this particular certification. So when I first got the certification, I was thinking like, oh my gosh, like she's got the market, you know, and I'm like, wait a minute, Catherine, like that's not how it works. And the thing that kind of like cemented that for me was I actually had a couple of clients who said, oh, I've, I've connected with her and she just, she didn't resonate with me. I didn't, you know, I didn't feel it. I didn't feel it with her. So we could be doing kind of similar content. And of course, everybody has a different approach, similar approach. And they just didn't, there was just something that wasn't, it wasn't the fit. It wasn't the fit. Right. Yeah. You're looking for the yeah. vibe, right? It's yeah, a vibe check. Totally. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you know, not everybody's going to resonate with me. This is the reason you and I are both on here, right? Is that, you know, you're doing your thing. I'm doing my thing, although we're talking about working together. So, you know, that might happen, but, uh, the, the, 
the reason we don't worry about it is because, you know, people are going to resonate with the yeah. person they resonate with. Right. Totally. And, totally. You know, even though yeah. we're really good friends, we do things very differently and mm -hmm. that's good. You mm -hmm. know, I, I am one of those teachers that is always encouraging people, please, please, please experience other people's rituals, experience other people's, you know, magic, whatever they do, you know, learn from other people because you are not going to become a clone of me. You shouldn't no. become a clone of no. me, right? No. And I'm not, I'm not training mini me's. I'm helping people to find them and their authentic yes. voice, of what they yes. do. Because, yes. you know, if I'm trying to train mini me's, I'm in my ego and I'm not actually in service, right? Yeah. And yeah. so, so you know, yeah. you need somebody who resonates with you enough that you want to be like them in some ways because they're like you, right? So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's actually mm -hmm. activating a part of you, right? Mm -hmm. And that part of you is being activated by the person you're learning from. And then the mm -hmm. rest of you will be activated by the learning process. And then you'll expand into your unique self, right? Yeah. That's yeah. why we have to have so many different teachers and so yeah. of, of the same stuff is because we need people who resonate with parts of ourselves, yeah. right? Yeah. And so yeah. that's the thing. I mean, you know, some people will resonate with me. Some people will resonate with you. Some people will resonate with, you know, the, the hundred thousand other people out there. Right. It's, it's fine. Mm -hmm. It's great. Mm -hmm. Right. There's enough to go around. That is the key. That's the, the kind of fundamental piece is when you're in competition, there's this belief that there's not enough. There's this, you know, scarcity mindset. We've talked about this on lots of other episodes and so noticing when you're in like this feeling of contraction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for those of you out there, cause I can hear it going, well, there's only so many people who need to have this work. It's like, well, yeah, but think about how many people you personally can actually service. Well, and how many people are on the planet? Like, right. What there's are eight, billion like people nine, on the planet. eight billion, nine billion. Yeah. Like there's, you cannot, <laughs> right. So even if there's like, you know, 0.1% of those people wanting to do this work, you can't possibly like really, truly help all those people. Yeah. And so, you know, this is, this is where it all comes into play. Right. So, you know, the, this is one of the things that I really work with people on in the ascend program, right? Because you know, you have to be able to really clearly be able to state what your personal offer is and to really be able to state clearly what it outcome you are delivering if you want to get out of the hourly mindset right mm -hmm. the, trading time for money yeah trading time for yeah. money and yeah. working one to one yeah. right yeah if you want to work one to many you need to be working with outcome based uh, promises right and so you know when you start to think in that fashion and you start to shift into that mindset that's when you actually start to make real money because at, at any time up until then, if you're trading your time for money, you are literally limiting your income dramatically because mm -hmm. you only have so many hours in a day and you will burn out. Mm -hmm. I talk to people all the time who have mm -hmm. filled their private practice and are now going, oh, I'm tired. I, yeah. Yeah. I'm so tired. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I imagine you are, right? Mm -hmm. So- and a lot of that isn't about necessarily, I mean, it is about shifting your offer, but it's also about shifting your energetics. It's about shifting how you're holding the container. Cause there are people I, I talk to, they're like, well, I do one-on-one -on -one healing work and you know, I, I have to be working with them in person. And, and I'm like, mm, you're doing energy healing. Yep. You do not have to be in person. Let's start with or, that. Or, or the belief that I have to like take on, you know, the, the energy of the client. Like that's a whole other thing that I think we could talk about for yeah. sure. That yeah. Is, yeah, that's a don't. No do bueno, it. no bueno. Don't, no, 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 no. <laughs> but you know, the idea that you have to be in person to do energy healing is just a falsity. It's, it's just not that's true. It's, it's, all, it's all in the quantum, right? So. Exactly. And mm -hmm. then the idea that you have to do it one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. and not in a group setting also false because on the quantum level, you, there's no time. Yeah. Right? There is well, no and time. The, and you can the operate on. Amplify. Yeah, Groups there's lots of ways. the outcome. Yeah, exactly. There's lots of ways to deal with it. There's lots of ways to 
to adjust the way that you work with your, your mindset and the energetics and how you ask for help and all the different things, right. From the, from the ethereal, from your guides, all that, that stuff. You know, and I, I think that when you're in that scarcity competition mindset, what happens is that you're not, you're not open to how else it could look. There's this yeah. belief or you've made an agreement that this is the way it is. And so when you have that, this is the way it is. There's not enough to go around. I have to trade time for money. Then you're not open to the universe can't bring you the other ideas and opportunities that are out there. So yeah. when you start to open up, well, what else could be possible, right? What if this wasn't the only way? What if it was easy? What if I could actually like work less and make more? Yeah. What if mm -hmm. I'm not limited my, by my geography, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I live in Panama. You and I both live in Panama. It's like, mm -hmm. well, nobody around here, well, not nobody, but, you know, most of the people around here are not going to likely hire us because, you know, it's just not in the mindset of the local economy, right? And the, and the price points aren't there and things like that. Yeah. But, you know. Okay, that's why we work online. That's fine, right? It's mm. and and you know there are benefits to every place. Like you know, I live we live in Bocafe, and so people can come here for a retreat, and that is fantastic, right? So that's where it's a benefit is that we know the local market, we know the local vendors, we know all of the stuff, so that we know what to expect, right? And we can account for different things. And having lived here for a couple of years, we've learned a lot about that. So, yeah. But you know, all of this stuff. And so when you're, when you're looking at, I want to bring it back to collaboration versus competition, right? Is that um, when you're looking at who are you going to collaborate with? And, and I want to talk about this in terms of trade as well. I don't want to do a whole episode on trade because it's not that big of a topic, but I do want to talk about it because it's a big thing, right? A lot of practitioners go looking for people who will trade them services for their services. Mm. And I, I want you to be very careful with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because people who are willing to trade services, 90% of the time are people who haven't figured out how to offer their services in such a way that they can make a living at it, which means that they're probably not somebody you would hire. Right. And, yeah. and you are effectively hiring somebody when you agree to trade with them. Okay. Just because there's no money, no money out of pocket doesn't mean it's not, there's no exchange of value. Right. Mm. And the IRS agrees because it wants to tax you on any, any uh, trade that you do. But the, the thing, the rule of thumb that I learned, and this was a hard one piece of knowledge for me, because I, I did a lot of trades where I didn't get my value back. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the rule of thumb I discovered was if I would not hire you to do the job, then I will not trade with you. Yeah. Okay. That, that is my flat up rule of thumb because it, it that's really what it comes down to. Okay. So just keep that in mind as you're looking for collaborators, because a lot of people will say, Hey, you know, let's, let's do a trade. And I'm like, mm, maybe not so much. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so there's that. And then in, when you're picking a collaborator, we want someone, as you said, Catherine, who has a values match with us. What does that mean to have a values match? A values match means that you guys approach the world from a similar place values wise. You have high integrity. You are in service. You are heart centered you are, you know, whatever, right? Whatever your values are that you approach your clients with, you do not want to be doing a trade with someone who is simply building a list to milk the list for money, because that's going to bring an, a group of people who aren't going to be in alignment with you. You want to make sure that whatever the, you, you want to see what the marketing is that they're doing to bring people onto their list before you agree to do a trade, right? And you want to get onto their mailing list for a couple of weeks at least to make sure that they're not flooding their list with a ton of different offers. Because if they are, people are tuned out and you wanna see whether their engagement is high enough, right? If, if their engagement is in at least 30%, then people aren't even opening their emails, why would you do a trade, right? Mm -hmm. 
So all of these things are things that you want to pay attention to. 30% is pretty good these days because people have limited attention spans. It used to be if you could get 50 or 80%, you were doing amazing, right? But nowadays getting people's attention is very tough. So 30% is sort of the benchmark that people tend to shoot for somewhere in that range, you know, plus or minus, you know, two and a half, three percent right? So that's how you know you have an engaged list. All right. Did you want to add anything to that, Catherine? I do. Yeah. Yeah. So the other, so the other thing with collaboration, I think is, wow, that thought just like went like running out of my <laughs> mind. Like, you know, when that happens where you're like, yes, I have something to say. And then it's like, and I'm like, squirrel, squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> my squirrels are at a rave right now. My squirrels are at a rave. Yeah. So what I, okay. And, and they're back. Hello. There we, there we go. go. Monday. So, so the thing I wanted to say is that you can also start to, if you haven't collaborated yet, it, it doesn't need to be like a list build to start or an event. Like you can start with maybe sharing ideas with somebody, right? Maybe brainstorming, maybe supporting each other, maybe, you know, starting to kind of play with that idea of offering it, you know, being in that person of increased kind of mentality where you're sharing ideas and they might actually take an idea that you've had and run with it, but yeah. that you're in that, you're in that flow of abundance and that flow of giving when you do it. So, so it, you know, and then that can work up to something a little bit more formal, but if you haven't done it yet, I would invite you to notice, okay, where, where do I feel constrictive when I think about that? Is there this belief that there's not enough to go around mm -hmm. and then think about like, what are five ways I could collaborate with somebody this week I and, that. and who are five people? Yeah. Five different, and then, and the same yeah, five, yeah, five different people and then reach out and do it. Like actually make contact Yeah, I this love week, that. this yeah. week. This week, mm -hmm. this week, mm -hmm. this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, because this is the thing is that it becomes so easy to not do it, right? Oh, totally. Or to put something yeah. else in the way of it, right? Because yeah. if you're going to do a list build collaboration, you're going to need some assets to, to do that with. You're going to need some promotional content. You're going to need a lead magnet. You're going to need a bunch of stuff that's going to get people to come onto your mailing list. You don't want them to just do a mailing and have it just flop, right? You want there to be momentum. And so you want to have an agreement to do multiple emails. And there's a bunch of different things that you have to do. This is, this, this is a whole process guys. Okay. We're just giving you some, some overview. We talk about this stuff more, uh, you know, I talk about it more detail in the ascend program. So, uh, if you're curious, come on to the spirit guides, school.com and a website and check out the, the courses for spiritual practitioners and coaches. And it'll give you some ideas about how this works in the ascent process. So, you know, it'll show you all the, the process of building out an entire business that will support you when you're not trading your time for money. Right. So the, I'll, I'll link it in the show notes for you, direct link to the page. So don't worry about that. Anyway, anything else you wanted to cover Catherine? No, I kind of feel I'm pretty complete with this one. Yeah, me too. All right. Yep. So okay, that's it for today, out. folks. Don't forget, bye to bye. Like. <laughs> don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And don't forget that what you focus on is what expands, what you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. Have a great one. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, I'm